Morning here, especially after all this rain, is really amazing. We've got the, so many different birds singing, insects waking up. You can see all the footprints on the road from all the animals who've been walking around at night. Leopards, hyenas, lion right here. So we're very lucky and, uh, you know, it is a very special place to be in the bush and see all the, the plants at the moment growing, just starting to flower. So. Pollinators are really important because one in three bites of food is thanks to a pollinator. Most of these pollinators in Kenya are insects, wild insects. These include bees, butterflies, hawk moths, flies, thousands of different species. You can find pollinators everywhere that you look. You can find them in places around your garden, around a farm, in a forest, in a field. Uh, Pollinators basically occur wherever flowering plants occur. Pollinators visit plants to feed on nectar, in many cases, and also pollen. This powdery yellow material is the pollen. This is the essence of life that insects are transferring from one flower to another. What will I depend to you in Tafanya? Sana sana. Custom, we believe we went to in a fanya to be a polynia, my indi king here. That is Okichuka Muzes, are you Mulize? You need pollen in a toka yoku, Kiku Yoku, Koma into Kuchina to come here and buried it. Who peppered in a fanya? How is you going to be a mamma insect? In the dry land. Uh, pollinators are especially important because many plants are seasonal. If we think about an animal like the camel, which uh, eats hundreds of different species of plants, including pods and seeds and fruits, uh, one of the most important plants that camels consume in these drylands is the indigophora, which is a legume. Legumes are really important. Without legumes, there could be no livestock keeping in northern Kenya or in the Horn of Africa. We are looking at uh, the understanding of insect pollinators for vegetables in the arid and semi-arid counties of Kenya. So you may ask also why vegetable pollinators. It's because according to the Kenya Bureau of Statistics, 96% of the horticulture crops that are grown then is consumed locally and also horticulture export contributes billions of shillings to Kenya's economy and uh, out of the horticulture export 48 percent consists of different vegetables. Currently we are focusing in Makuendi and Machakos counties because this is also an area that faces real challenges in uh, nutrition and food security. And also a lot of research has been focusing on the Afro-Montane areas, uh, Mount Kenya, Kakamega Forest, 
And yet, the drylands, like we are finding, they have such a diverse species. So it's time we also recorded what we have in the greater part of this country. Once now we have the baseline of what we have, then maybe a year down the line we can come and repeat the same experiment and know are the status changing for worse or for better. Uh, once we collect them from the trap, we, we make uh, envelopes and put the records on each envelope so that once we get back to the lab, we can be able to relax them, so we can be able to pin them and spread, spread their wings so that when you come to the museum, you can be able to see, like this is Caraxes Zulina from Kikome. We have all the details on the envelope. You know, Kikome, farmland, at what point, which date, and collected by who. Bees are amongst the most important group of pollinators. They are very diverse. Kenya has over a thousand species of different bees. Most people think there's only one or two bee species, things like honeybees or stingless bees or carpenter bees, but there are hundreds and hundreds of bee species. We are very familiar with the honeybee, that is a social bee living in a hive, in a colony, in a hollow tree. Most of the bees in the world are solitary and they nest typically in holes and cavities that they excavate in the ground. So they, some of them nest in existing holes in wood, in old trees and dead branches and stems. <laughs> So what I'm going to do is to show you here why butterflies are important pollinators, because as I unroll its proboscis, which is the basically the mouth part of the butterfly, it's made of a very interesting substance called resilin, which is a substance that no matter how many times we, you stretch it out, it keeps folding back into its shape. And because many butterflies have a proboscis and they are feeding on liquid food, primarily nectar from flower, they are able to also serve as pollinators. We have thousands of different species across the world. In Kenya, there are between 900 and 1,000 butterflies. Studying pollinators is really important because you have many situations where farmers are growing crops and they may not fully understand what's happening in terms of yield. And we've worked with a number of different farmers around the country where we found things like eggplant farming or passion fruit or mango or even coffee. Not just yield, but quality can be significantly improved through managing pollinations. I come from a coffee growing zone and uh, we have coffee in our family and I noted for many years uh, much as we had put all the farm inputs coffee production was just going down. Uh, the first objective was to collect all the flower visitors before I could discriminate and say that these are the pollinators these are just floral visitors because this is the first day of its kind in Kenya. I noted that the bees were actually the ones that were making contact with the anders and the stigma. That's how I got to know that they could be the, the pollinators. And one thing is that when coffee is not flowering, the crops are not flowering, even other crops, 
the bees need a refuge. And the only refuge they can get is through the, the weeds and other plants that are growing near the, the farms. When coffee is not pollinated, you'll get very small berries uh, called uh, pea berries. And if, uh, a, a good coffee berry, the fruit itself, has two ovules, it's a bean. In absence of pollination, it only forms one ovule. So, obviously, uh, the pollinated berry will be a higher grade than the pea berry. And it will also be better in quality, in terms of uh, size. Uh, the, the berries are heavier. And then also, when uh, the coffee is uh, liquored, it will have a better taste and aroma. You cannot get grade AA in your coffee when you have the pea berries. Uh, double A or grade AA, of course it fetches better prices in the market and actually mostly it's what it is used for, for export. For your information, our coffee is the second best in the world. And now that even uh, this, the, the, free uh, the, the free trade associations, farmers should be able to bargain better prices for their coffee rather than converting everything into real estate. I tried uh, looking at issues of pollination among farmers, like for example, what pollinates coffee? Most farmers did not know, more than 50% of farmers didn't know. And they'll tell me that uh, bees are bad when they visit coffee, they eat the flowers, they make the flowers drop because the moment a coffee flower is pollinated, after three days, it dries up and drops. So they would not think it's a positive thing that it is showing that now fruits are setting. They would take it negatively. So they would persecute, they, they persecute the bees by even spraying. Pollinators are facing an uncertain future in many areas. As we cut down forests, as we burn charcoal, as we harvest sand, as we do all these different things, they actually impact habitats where pollinators live, where they nest, where they breed, where they feed and forage. Crops depend on pollinators differently. There are some that are totally dependent on pollinators. For example, cucumbers, watermelon, which Kenyans like a lot. Yeah. If you don't prevent pollinators, you get no fruit. Because the female and male flowers are far apart, so you have to carry the pollen. So every time you bite a watermelon, it's purely responsibility of pollinators. So you can say any money coming from watermelon is 100% because of pollinators. If you look at oil, oil like sunflower, in Kenya we stopped, uh, many farmers stopped growing sunflower because they could not get market. Why? Because the companies that buy sunflower seeds, they say the oil content is very low. And why so? Because of pollination. We found very clearly that when we provide sunflower with pollinators, there is an additional use of uh, oil content of more than 56%. India, South Africa, uh, Denja. 
Kila mwa diyo kuna ndawezi na kala nka tu ne. Kila kia tia ni chao. Kukwati wao. Na kenu chao mbere kukwani chao. Ni nzogeti wao. Na agu endi wao diyo kuna weki te vest. Kenu chao kile ni chao. Kala ngiwa kelo iwa iwa yelo. Kala ngiwa yelo we the away. Very toxic. Namuna Munu with the Andromaco Wacho, Promaco and Zogi. Like you are with the Awa blue, what blue with the Awi toxic with the Awa blue. Timokal Muno, for this is our now with the Awin environmentally friendly. This is our sour. Nalangi Wakana, the weaver with the Awangilin. Cooks like green. No theatre. Nine is a way and a green, no green, they take ya. Bola, tu o peninho não acabou nada o a, o eu vou quando eu tocar na chão, por onde é de hoje o ano da o a, já que não, na rua não o não mu. Think about how do you use pesticides? Do you need to use them? Can you use them carefully? Follow the instructions if you do use them, so that you limit the effect on pollinators. Where you can, stop using pesticides. Use other alternatives that are not toxic to be. Mimi ni mkulima katika area hii ya eh, Elgeo Marakwet County. Area hii ni mzuri sana kwa kilimo hii ya maembe sababu iko na choto, iko na inafanya maembe iwe tamu sana hii chua. Niko na eka 30 hapa ya maembe under plantation ya maembe. Na hii maembe niko na variety sita. Na hiyo maembe inafanya hiyo biashara mzuri sababu ina inaiva kwa tivaren months. So hii miti yangu inatuanga inatuanga 1000 kwa mfano na use shilingi 20 20 nitakuwa nimepata elipu 1000 Maembe yangu inauzwa mpaka Nairobi, Uganda na hii town yetu yetu ya Eldred na eh, Kisumu. Mambo ya wadudu inaitwa fruit fly. Ni mbaya sana sababu hiyo ndiyo ilikataza sisi maembe yetu yende ngambo lakini tumejaribu sana kusaidiana na watu ya Isibe na watu ya Kari so tume kama mwaka jana nimeuza maembe yangu 90% pela dudu ambao tumetumia kuna travels tume tumetumia tena on had on top of that one ni shamba imechulikana hata mpaka European Union unaweza ona ile flango wamesema shamba hii ni clean hatuna hatuna tawa kwa matunda yetu hizo traps zinawekwa eka moja kama ine ambao tunanunua 250 moja na inashika ile male peke yake alafu ile zingine females inakosa kuisha sababu males imeisha hizo hizo traps it is only purposely ya ya fruit fly Sio ile ile bolileta zinatumiwa na bees. So we have a young praying mantis, a nymph right here. And the praying mantis is another group of predatory insect, very important because they help us control other insects. And this one here in particular is helping by eating some of the uh, milkweed bugs as well as the aphids that are growing in the field house. Zaibi ile watu wameanza kujifunzia mambo ya insects. Sasa tunaona tunajua. Tunajua hata greenhouse tunaweza kuweka hizi na carpenter bee. Na sasa itakuwa inafanya kazi mara pili. Inatengeneza asali na inasaidia pollination hapo ndani. Jua mi na pende asari kiba ya tuje asari ni kitu kimoja inaoza meno. Akuna mtu muri na asari mwenye yako na meno yote. Mi mi ni kwa moja wao. Suna jua ni sukari. Na vile hiko sukari ukitoa kuna yenda kutafuta sini kuambia tu na collect uko easy nest. Ukienda uko sini lazima utakula kwa kitoko. Ndiyo lanji sasa. Una nafazi ya kupiga piga misuwagi huko tena. Misuwagi ndi kuwanga nyumbani. Asa vidi inakaa sana ndiyo inaanza kukimba hiyo mashimo kwa meno. 
inakubidi usichukue zaidi ya dakika 20 baada ya kukula asali upige mswagi upige hii uchafu itoke Kenya is blessed with an incredible amount of diversity. So it's really, really important that we understand what is biodiversity. Biodiversity is all these different species and all of the interactions they have with other species, including plants, crops, and people. We have a website that you can visit that has a lot of information about pollinators. It's called discoverpollinators.org and there are many different uh, products available on that site freely for download including a book our friends the pollinators conservation of pollinators is a must we must bring this back to our farms otherwise all the other work we will do on coffee be it all the inputs we use will be in vain because this coffee I've said is amphicarpic, 50% in need of pollination. What I can see now is housing estates. There's no way bees will live with many, uh, with people in the houses. So we are destroying the habitat for the bees. So if you lose pollinators and uh, if pollination service is insufficient, what will happen is uh, you have less produce of low quality. And you, you know when supply is less and the demand is high, what happens is the pricing goes high. So the consumers are going to pay more for low quality produce. And they will go to, many, many times they will go to hospital because the nutrition is low. Now if we don't take care of it, we, we are losing it quickly. But if we do take care of it, we will have our pollinators and have them pollinate crops and uh, be able to continue enjoying the fruits of their labors. As a Kenyan scientist, I feel it's imperative that more young people in Kenya get involved in science and understanding nature. So even if you spend just a few minutes a day going out into your garden or your farm or your schoolyard, or if you're lucky and you live in an area where there's more wildlife, go and observe, look at things, learn about them, find out about them, write to experts, visit the National Museum, do things that will enable you to learn more about nature, but also to celebrate and understand it in your own life and share those experiences with others. And it doesn't take anything. You don't need any special equipment. All you need is patience and to be quiet and move slowly and you'll be able to see and understand a lot about nature.